The two mosques in the New Zealand city of Christchurch, where 50 peaceful worshippers were slaughtered one week ago, reopened their doors today. Many survivors of the mass shooting, New Zealand's worst, were among the first to walk in and pray for those who died. When I close my eyes, every time I see the something, you know, like all the dead body, all the horror we've been through. Yeah. Emotions are still raw at the mosques where a lone gunman burst through the doors during Friday prayers and shot at everyone in his path in what appeared to be a racist, anti-immigrant and Islamophobic attack. The response we've got from the whole community around New Zealand, I think it's made us stronger. Uh, it's made us come together and as you can see the police presence here is is strong and I think it will remain that way for quite a while. Armed police stood guard at the gates. An unintentional reminder of the darkest hour in New Zealand, a country where low crime rates are part of its identity and officers are often unarmed. <laughs> but prayers resumed with no graphic reminders of the horrific bloodshed. Obviously it's important for people to have their place of worship open and it's been amazing to see the round the, round the clock work by so many people to get the mosque reopened. There was a call for action on Islamophobia from Muslim leaders who called last Friday's massacre a wake-up call that hate can kill. It is time for the free leaders of the world to take actions and legislate laws against hate and racism against any human being, regardless of race, color and religion. New Zealand's national terrorist threat level remains high since the attack, with Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern turning grief into political action and announcing a clampdown on guns in the wake of the tragedy, winning her the world's attention. But I believe what I've done has not been about leadership. All I have done is simply echoed the humanity of New Zealanders. New Zealand's government today banned a manifesto believed to have been released by the alleged gunman on social media and sent to the Prime Minister's office just minutes before firing his first shots. The government argues the more than 70-page document promotes hate, terrorism and murder. Authorities earlier in the week also banned footage of the fatal shootings.